beautiful, strong, resilient. Every woman's journey to motherhood is unique and beautiful in its own way. On today's episode, we'll be speaking with mothers as they share their experiences. I'm Tomike Adeoye at Duny's Tea Room, and this is Real Talk. Growing up as a lady in Nigeria, you see, there are so many expectations. I feel like they have this timetable that they've created for us. As a woman, you go to school, you graduate, you work, and then you get married. And when you get married, we are the children. <laughs> Was this the reality for you growing up? Yep. See? Yes. Yeah. You felt like you had to follow that yeah. timetable that you had yeah, created yeah, for my, you. My dad actually kind of... I mean, there was no pressure per se, it was, but it was there. Really subtle, subtle pressure. <laughs> subtle, subtle pressure. pressure. Yes, oh, it was there. Well, what was the same for you, Teddy? To be honest with you, I think I was the one that puts all of that pressure on me from when I was young. I just thought, you know what, yeah, this is the timetable. I love the timetable. <laughs> and I want to follow exact. I kid you not, I timed wow. every single thing, including the time I was meant to get married. I knew the age. I wanted to get married when I was 23. I wanted to have all my children before I was 25. Mm, wow. So I'd, 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 no, it wasn't society, it was more or less me. <laughs> I so did it to me. Did you follow the timetable? Did you get married at 24? So everything was perfect up until the whole baby scene. Oh. And then literally, I felt this wave like, boom, like, oh my God, oh, wow. yeah. That was the moments that everything just kind of like went up in the air. Okay, yeah, we'll yeah. come back to that. Chilu. We're all girls in my house, four girls. So wow. it was like no boy. So like unspoken. You guys mm. already know the truth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, really yeah. subtle. <laughs> but it was just like we don't have to tell you. Mm -hmm. You already yeah, didn't. Yeah. And I think it came into play immediately after school. If you want to do my stuff, that's fine. Just one year. But well, now time. that school is done, done, whether you have a job or not, where's your boyfriend? Where is it? <laughs> And yeah. I feel like even growing up, they would say, oh, I don't have a boyfriend until this. And then yeah. suddenly, they say, where's your husband? Where's your husband? Where's your husband? Where's your husband coming from? Yeah, exactly. I didn't have a boyfriend since. Yeah. But let's talk about the reality of it all. You know, we had these expectations for you. You said um, you planned it. You even gave it timing. Yeah. And then you got into it and it was a different thing entirely. Yeah. What are some of the realities? Okay. Um, one of the realities was the fact that it was now not in my own hands Actually. anymore. And for the fact that I couldn't control it, pissed me off because I love control. I love following a line. I remember we were having this conversation when I was in uni and my friends were all talking about when we're gonna get married, when I'm gonna have kids. So literally they all said, oh, 28, 29, I have kids probably in my 30s. And literally when I told them 23, they all opened their mouth. I was like, Teddy, are you okay? <laughs> like I remember one of my friends see me, she was like, Tanya, are you crazy? And I'm like, this is literally what I want. So I think everybody around me already knew that when I didn't have kids after six months, they were already kind of like babying me because they knew how my own mental state was. And they knew that this is definitely going to affect her. You know, I talk about it a lot, the fact that I had to get an IVF done, you know, and I don't, I, I may not go that deep into <laughs> the whole IVF time, but for me, obviously, if you have planned everything, IVF is not in that mix at all. Like, so me dealing with that at the age of 24 wow. was this shocker because all my friends were not married. They did not understand what it meant, what, what it was to even get married. Talk less of <laughs> dealing with the whole fertility thing. So, you know, it, it was difficult for me. Well, my own journey, I mean, was pretty easy. I didn't have to wait, but I had a very, very difficult pregnancy. And I think for me, that was the beginning of, you know, like actual journey into motherhood. So I remember that when we got married, uh, we, we planned to wait for a year hmm. at least. But then I think two or three months, I started to change my mind because I didn't have a job. Amen. I had just been, <laughs> 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 you know? I had just moved back to Nigeria after a few years of being away. And it was literally like I didn't have anything else to do. So I was like, what am I waiting for? I might as well just, you know, start trying for these babies. And I then got a job. Um, we got married in May. I got a job in July. And then I got pregnant, I think, in September. So I, I wasn't sure if I was ready. But, you know, it happened. I was like, okay, fine, it has happened. And then the first couple of weeks of pregnancy, I was really excited. You know, I was eating a lot and everything. I was fine. We told our parents. And then two weeks after, everything just changed. And it was like the longest one year of my life. I had an extremely difficult pregnancy. 
like I was literally in hospital every every other week or thereabouts. Um, I mean, I could have passed for someone on bed rest wow. easily. I had a condition called um, hyperemesis, um, hyperemesis, and uh, that's an extreme extreme morning sickness. That's what they call it. But wow. honestly, that thing is not morning sickness. <laughs> <laughs> it's all, all, that morning. Morning. all day, all night. Wow. <laughs> I couldn't eat anything at all. Like literally, nothing. No food. No water. I I don't know how I survived. 10 months. I say pregnancy is 10 months. Everybody says 9 months, but it's 40 <laughs> weeks. 4 times 10 <laughs> is 40. <laughs> so, as, as, far, as far as I'm concerned, you know, 10 months of hell. It was hell. I couldn't eat. I couldn't drink. I had motion sickness. I couldn't get in a car. Wow. Like it was really bad. And I had to go to work even in all of this. So wow. every time I wasn't in hospital, I was at work, wow. but then I couldn't work. So I was like literally just going there to mark register and then I'll lie down on the couch as it is time to close and I'll go home. So that was really tough. That phase passed. Um, the delivery itself came, and oh, goodness, it was it was bad. I was in labor for about twenty, almost twenty four hours. Wow! Like it was just one thing after another. And then after that phase, um, I think the next one was I couldn't pass two for about two weeks wow. postpartum. Okay. So. I had to go back into hospital. It was like going through labor all over again. We literally had to pull out my poop. Whoa. And then wow. after that, um, my my the what's it called? The infection the the incision site got infected. And you know, I went through that one too for like another maybe three, four weeks or something. And then after that um, after the postpartum bleeding had stopped for a few weeks, I then started to bleed again, and I also I had fibroids. So you know, it was just back to back, back, back to back. <laughs> <laughs> it was really, wow. it, so no so you know, at some point, I started to question myself, like Why motherhood. Not? Like, do we really have to go through all of this just to be mothers? But honestly, it's worth it. Mm. It is worth it. How, yeah. how did you actually cope with all this? Like, it's a whole lot emotionally, mentally. It's very easy to share the story now, mm. but I can just imagine mm. what it was like so back I, I to back in the yes, hospital. Yes, yes. Like I, I, I was saying before we, you know, before we started the show, the very first time I actually sat down to share the entire story with someone from like end to end, I cried. Mm. I cried because I didn't realize how much I needed to let out because mm. you know that expectation of a woman. In the middle of all of this, you know, I still had to be a mom, mm. breastfeed my baby mm. and, you know, do all of that, be a wife, you know, and there's just that expectation. Even though I had support, my mom, you know, my husband, my in-laws, my dad, my brother, everyone was around me and everyone was trying to make sure I was comfortable. But what? still, it's the hard work. You have to do the hard work yourself. Oh, well, I think I'm a mix of you both. <laughs> yeah. Because on one hand... My husband and I agreed that we're not going to, you know, have babies until one year after our wedding. And it was all fun because we didn't even do honeymoon, like, until six months. Mm. So the subtle pressure came when after honeymoon, we came back and I'm like, <laughs> honeymoon, nobody was even thinking of protection or anything. So I'm like, okay, by my analysis, if you are without, you know, you should already be pregnant. And then that didn't happen. So it was like pressure on me first. Because mm. in a way, I was able to, you know, just say, no, we're not ready because we had not started trying. But the mm. moment my body was not automatically doing what it was meant to do after I was now actively trying, the pressure just started to sink in mm. when they say, ah, there's no pressure, but what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> Every word from that time, that didn't mean anything to me because I knew that I'm not trying for a baby, yeah. so I can't relate. Mm -hmm. Every word from that time became something. And so I would go, <laughs> I was like, we say we tried everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and at that time, I spoke to myself, I'm, see, whoever is alive can be a mother. Just calm down. <laughs> like, I was literally wearing the pressure yeah. all over. Like, that was all I could pray about. I'm like, money's not my problem. I was like, God, give me this child by force. So at that point, I had to take the pressure off myself. I'm like, see, 
God's going to do it. He's going to do it. I had all the trackers, all the apps. Mm. I deleted everything. Wow. It was just that subtle, mm, it's a mm. relation time oh, yeah. that was there left. And then we just did. And that weekend, my, my husband was even meant to travel to Kenya. And then we're like, you see, like, the spirit is telling me you should stay back. <laughs> <laughs> and that was actually the month we finally wow. conceived. But, you know, people will say now, like, some people look at me like, oh, you didn't even wait up to two years. Why are you calling me a waiting period? It was actually a really dark and lonely place for me. Mm. Even if it was just about six months now of actively trying without yeah. getting pregnant, mm. it was lonely. Like, even if you're calling your sisters or my mom to say, okay, I'm not really... You can't really tell them that. Mm. I had to put my legs up for five minutes, as you said. They will go, what they are done, put your legs up, don't move. We've tried all of wow. that. Nothing is happening month on month on month. So for me, that was my waiting. But after I got pregnant, I was fine until my sixth week. And then on my appointment, I moved to IPRMS. That was where the wow. word was so like close to my mouth because I was in and out of the hospital as well. But mine ended eventually after... To 13 to 14 weeks, but I couldn't keep okay. water down. I was sick. Like, I'll try and eat Amala, and then everything okay. comes out. Like, I'm enjoying something one minute, the second minute, I can't okay. stand it. So, that first trimester was really tough on my body. I couldn't go to work. I'm like, if I come, I'm useless to you. There yeah. is no point. So mm -hmm. I couldn't go to work. But afterwards, it just became a jolly ride. I had a bit of energy in my second mm -hmm. and third trimester. So, I was just up and about everywhere, doing everything I could nesting before the baby came and then baby came i was like oh wow <laughs> I actually wow. until you said that like everything in that moment i actually have no idea how much i suffered yeah. you have how many kids two kids i have two how, how many kids do you have Sally? three wow <laughs> <laughs> was it after immediately after the um first child you decided to have the second child um so for me no my my first was uh, about two and a half mm -hmm. and then even Though I was really scared because of my first experience, I was like very, very scared. I didn't even want to do it. I remember telling myself so many times that I'm never going to do this again. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they all say. And then you keep babies upon babies. My friend said yeah. that the first year, one year after she has a second child. Yeah. <laughs> and you know how Yoruba people will say a lot of manfic bag, basically, which yeah. means God, God makes you forget. To be honest, I don't know whether that's true. I, I didn't forget. I haven't, for I haven't forgotten, but I always knew that I wanted at least one more child. Mm. So, I mean, we discussed it and we decided to start trying. And I think we tried for about three months wow. and, you know, it eventually happened. But the second pregnancy was so, it was so different. I didn't have a premises. I was fine. And the delivery was, it was totally, like, it was two different, yeah. I had co two completely different experiences. I don't know if the fact that I didn't have the second baby in Nigeria had anything to do with it, but it was a totally different experience. Like, it was, it was easier. It was much easier. When you finally had the, your first baby, your yeah. son, yeah. did you experience any delay before you had your second child? Um, so, what I went through with my first son, kind of like, I didn't want to go at it so so soon and I knew that I had to do IVF again and I wasn't ready for that roller coaster. So we were just coasting and coasting and coasting and we we're just trying naturally because you hear it where okay the first time it happens and then it comes naturally. So for around three years, wow. three years and a bit we were just trying, you know, normally and then we now had to go and do an an IVF treatment. I've heard lots of stories about, you know, people who, it even comes easy at first. Mm -hmm. they, they, they take it naturally. Like yeah. I had a friend who took in, in shots before she got married. She had a baby and it did not seem like she would have to wait for the yeah. second child. But I think these things happen. They yeah. Happen. Yeah. 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 Speaking yeah, of everything sure. that your body had to go through to birth your child, what are some of the body changes that you noticed? Did you, you know, break out? Did you gain weight? So for me, I lost a lot of weight because wow. I, I couldn't eat. I wasn't eating, I wasn't drinking. That like I, my, <laughs> That's really great. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't feel great because yeah. my, huh? it was, mine was really bad. I mean, I'm not, I don't, it's I'm not, not even. You're not fat. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> you can imagine what was left. It was so oh, bad that wow. my, I would try to put on a pair of trousers and it would drop to the ground. Oh, wow. wow. Yes. That's how much weight I lost. So um, I didn't experience weight gain or anything like that. I think the only thing I experienced for me was hair loss. Mm, yeah, I, I experienced yeah. a lot of hair loss. And then after, it was after the baby came, I then started to experience like um, uh, swelling feet and mm, water wow. retention. Yeah, after the baby, I had that. 
going for a, f a few weeks. But then, for some reason, I, I don't know. I think I was just lucky. My body actually just no, cooperated. Just snap back. Yeah, no, yeah. Snap back. Yes. Were you prepared for all that? For all the changes? Like, even after you had the I baby, I didn't know there was anything. Exactly. I wasn't because when I was pregnant, I didn't experience all of these things. So it was very strange when it started happening after mm. the baby came. But then, like, with tummy, which I know is what a lot of people deal with, my tummy, for both pregnancies, I didn't have, like, big tummy after it wow. really went down. On its wow. own, Damn and I, it. I couldn't even exercise oh, wow. because I had um, C-section right. for both Aww. of them. So I, I, even if I wanted to, I couldn't even exercise. So I was lucky on that front. But you know, I had all those other little, little like hair loss and, and stuff. Tadi, what are some of the body changes that you experienced? Uh, were they different? I think mine was opposite. I had hair. Like wow, my hair was like I was like a diva. <laughs> <laughs> I was in full diva mode because I was wow. like, and then the thing was. It was like I think my was the exact opposite because I was extremely skinny, so it now made me gain weight and I now look like <laughs> the right Kim Kardashian, girl. <laughs> and I loved it. Like I was so voluptuous, and then my, my boobs came yeah, out, yeah, and then I was yeah, like, oh, it's not so yeah. tiny anymore. <laughs> so I felt, and then my skin. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Like wow. before, my I would have spots, and then at one point, like my skin was just glossy, Glowing. you know. So I felt like you know, in terms of my body, my body definitely is like you know what? Yeah, we're going to toast you. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and then, I, I I wouldn't even lie, but then obviously after I was now losing. So first of all, my hair that was so glamorous before is like, okay, now you're done. <laughs> you're gonna lose all of that. <laughs> you're gonna lose all of that. Stretch marks, because I heard um, the stretch actually brings forth stretch marks. Yeah, on on the tummy. Uh, yes. yes, yes. But but does it go after? It my went actually. My mine disappeared. I'm just saying, like, is this same pregnancy? <laughs> But I, actually, so I was very worried about it because I had stretch marks a lot. And then, but your body was still yeah. Really and then after, I know. Mean, yeah. like, <laughs> mine just disappeared after. Wow. First thing for me was I was really sick in my pregnancy. The first trimester, so I lost the whole ten kg, and in my head, wow. okay, that's a good wow. start. Wow. Yes, Those. like I was, I couldn't eat anything. Mm. Just. 16 weeks, I lost 10 kg. Do you know, but I just lost weight and I'm thinking, am I pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to really? cut you short right now. <laughs> and then, uh, but like I said, second and third trimester, I had this boost of energy. I was literally eating anyhow in my head. And this is me, I was really skinny if I got married, but while I was trying and they were doing all the inside me, I was getting fatter, oh. you know? So at this point when I lost it, I'm like, okay, all the weight is gone now, I can maintain it, but it didn't really work. Because second mm. and third, I ate it's, so much, yeah. so I, I was really fat. My stomach was long. <laughs> my, kids, my stomach was so long. I always think that this is the first. So a day before I, I put to bed, I took a picture and I always joke that this is a day before I dropped my first solo. Like <laughs> I would sit down and my belly would almost reach so my wow. knee. I am oh not my kidding. God. So I already already I already wow. figured out that snapback won't be here. <laughs> 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 like, I didn't bother myself. There was a lot of societal when somebody snapback. pushed to bed. Yes. And and then snapback, four snapback, weeks snapback, there's a picture snapback. you're like queen of snapback ah, but ah, like, snap it, my body, <laughs> i know my body i know my journey yes, so i really took great. my time so let's talk about let's talk about self-discovery does the journey to motherhood becoming a mom does it help you discover yourself or do you feel this gives you purpose um i i think it's a continuous um continuous thing mm. you know um when in the process of starting you discover certain things about yourself and it's ongoing because I remember one of my friends who had a baby recently and I, I, I was telling telling him that uh, um, welcome to the club, you know, welcome to the club where your life is no longer yours. Mm. And that's just how it is. You keep, I mean, it's, it's a lifelong journey. So yes, there's some level of self-discovery that comes, but it comes with every step. You kind of find some purpose to in the middle of that journey but i don't think it's a definite it's not something that you can actually sit down and say this is it i've discovered this and you know so this is what i've discovered about myself or this is the purpose or whatever no um for me i definitely feel like that was a game changer in terms of my life when i got pregnant with my son obviously the whole journey was kind of like rough so i dealt with postnatal depression and that came about because I had this expectation of how motherhood, <laughs> how you are meant to be as a mother. Mm. I am meant to be perfect, breastfeed your child. You know, you are meant to be 
this woman, 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 <laughs> mother, mother, and I was falling short of so many of it. And that process of me falling short of it made me so hard on myself. And I started wondering, I said, what is wrong with you? Why can't you just do basic things? Because I couldn't breastfeed my son, you know, because he had a t it was basically a journey in itself. So I was really rough and that roughness plus C-section plus everything threw me straight into postnatal depression. So when I came out of it, I was like, okay, you know what? I couldn't breastfeed. So I'm going to cook for my child. I'm going to do whatever it takes to kind of like living. I reached out to one lady called Amaka. She was into, she was so into, you know, babies and all of that. So I reached out to her. I'm like, a lot of moms are struggling. They don't know how to cook food for their baby. I think we should do something to just try and help moms. I was just in this whole helping, helping, helping. And then she was like, okay, no problem. So that was the first thing I ever did by myself without my husband because you know in the advertising side of things it was my husband and i my husband and i so then it now took me to my own self-discovery of finding who i am finding out my strengths and my weaknesses so doing that it was like wow Tade, you can actually mm -hmm. do things like you can actually help people you can do this and then you know the next step was obviously starting a found my foundation baby haven foundation and um that was literally it just unlocked me like and it it just blew me into this you know mode of purpose well for me i love to say that birthing my daughter was the best of purpose and that's because i had found something in the bible specifically that said that god will help you through hard times so that you can help somebody in that same hard time mm. so for me it was a case of my waiting period no matter how short mm. you know whoever thinks it was just transformational to know that you can trust God for this and mm -hmm. he will give it to you. So mm -hmm. for me, that purpose, like my YouTube channel, I used to say, I think about faith, marriage, lifestyle. I've gone to put motherhood <laughs> and lifestyle. <laughs> and like, so now there was a prayer in March we did for people waiting. That side of me wasn't there prior to having a baby. Mm -hmm. But when you go through rough water sometimes, you already know how it feels. So it's easy for you to relate it to other people. So... That was one purpose that did for me. And like you said, holistically, not like, now this is my whole purpose, mm -hmm. but mm. it has really grounded me in that aspect. Mm. But, but how did you adjust to it all? The changes, <sighs> even in your marriage, it can be the same. Ooh. Definitely not. <laughs> 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 I know you have some I love that. Because I feel like the relationship between you and your partner, I feel like, especially when you now have like issues here and there in pregnancy, the relationship already starts getting severed or maybe you know coming together there has to be or there is always a kind of change, change it just yeah. depends for my husband and i personally i feel like we grew apart a bit even though it was nine months like i was just telling you now how mm -hmm. while i'm sick i can't take care of you sorry take care of yourself i have myself now and this baby to take care of like food i cannot even smell food <laughs> And then for me, it now became, I am your responsibility now. Yeah. So I used to be, hello, please come. That was, we could say that to each other maybe in three hours. Hello, please come. <laughs> you, help me get, uh, you know, and then sometimes the emotional part of you just wants this person to be able to feel exactly what That's you're feeling. feeling. So that happened a lot for me. And it took conscious effort after our baby was born for us to start to, you know, go back to our mushy, mushy state mm -hmm. of love birds and all of that. But yeah, it did change that. For work, for me, I mean, I couldn't mm -hmm. be bothered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was off work my first trimester, but I'm like, if they say I should retire, it's okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is what I've been preaching. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that did change as well. Okay. Yeah, I think for me, it's similar to yours as well. It's, you know, you just have to find a way to strike that balance. But it's never easy because, I mean, I have myself to look after. I'm not even feeling well. Like, I don't even know what I'm feeling. <laughs> if you ask me how I'm feeling, I can't even tell you. You know, so I know that my husband struggled a bit with that because sometimes I'll just see him looking at me like, I don't even know I'm supposed to help her. Oh, and then I'm looking at him yeah. like, don't you know what you're supposed to do yeah. without me saying it? Yeah. You know, so I know that that kind of put a strain on our relationship but you know the good thing about pregnancy is it's only for a few months mm -hmm. so you just have to try and wait it out and then even after the baby comes it's it's ah, it's even more work because you're tired like all day all night you have no time for for what really <laughs> <laughs> you want to touch me you know you're up like all night feeding a baby and then you're like oh my god do i still have to you know so yeah 
it's a lot but i guess with two people who understand each other you just need to make room for that understanding to um, i would say that for me it was kind of different because because we had a lot of miscarriages involved in our journey before before the miscarriages i did not understand i didn't even want to understand my husband because I'm like, you, you didn't deal with any of the things, so you didn't understand what I was going through. So there was this huge detachment mm. and it kept on going further apart. And there was this day, so for me, I used to just, I was so angry and I didn't know how to express my anger. So he was the only person that I could just yeah. express that yeah. anger to. Yeah. And then there was one day he broke down. And I was just kind of like shocked. I, I just got the system and I was like, what's going on here? Why is this guy breaking down? Mm -hmm. And then that was the moment that I realized that he's actually a human being. Mm. And then that was the moment where I started putting him above what I used to before. So in as much as I'm feeling a lot, I used to also feel what is, I used to detach myself from my feelings a lot and try to understand a lot more about him. So I started balancing out. When the baby came, I always used to, I always used to detach focus, detach, focus. So I always, I, I learned that balancing act so well. You were really intentional about it, but mm -hmm. was it the same in the bedroom? Was intimacy the same after child, childbirth? Or was it something that you had to be really intentional about <laughs> so you don't draw apart? It took a while. So obviously, even with, because even with the body changes, naturally, you can't even want to. Exactly. You know, you, you, you don't, it won't, even if you want to, you <laughs> know, it, it just won't happen. Yeah. So yes, but then after, obviously, after a while, after the baby starts to grow and your body starts to, you know, feel like itself again, oh. then yes, you can let yourself go again. But immediately after, no. I understand why they say we are pregnant. Because <laughs> even, even the man feels everything as he does. <laughs> there is truly no manual for these things. I feel no. like we need more conversations like this. Can you share yeah. these stories with your friends to know what exactly is going on in real life, in reality? <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of secrecy around. Mm. You know, even mm. from this whole African, when you're pregnant, don't tell anybody. Yes. Until, you know? Even taking it from there alone, you know, your mom says, ah, so you know, but, and then my mind, I'm thinking, pregnancy would not hide, you know, True. you can't hide it. At some point, it would come yeah. out. Mm. So I, I think the fact that already we live in fear, first of all, yes. about, oh, if this person knows I'm pregnant, maybe, you know, mm. it, it kind of just takes away that opportunity to have conversations. Mm. And then even when the baby is born, most of the time, most people don't share stories of, ah, this is what I went through yeah. when I had the baby. Everyone just feels like, oh, she's had the baby oh, and that's yeah. it, you know. Yeah. I remember listening to a lady's story and she was saying that she even had to hide it from even her own family because wow. she had CS and she didn't want them to feel like she was a failure. The very first time I heard that people think that when you have CS, it means that you're a failure. I was shocked. <laughs> I didn't know it was a thing. <laughs> Apparently it is. Like, you know, yeah. people literally yeah, judge you for not being able yes. to push your own baby out. Yeah. And I'm like, it's my body. Yes. Because I remember that when I went into labor, before I finally had a CS, it wasn't planned. It was emergency. And yes, it was the, the, the you know, there's some medical, you know, decisions had to be taken. I think the, at the point where I looked at the doctor and I said to him, look, if you tell me to push one more time, I'm going to die. <laughs> I literally said that to him. Yeah, and he was like, okay, let's just have a surgery. I knew that I couldn't do it. It doesn't mean that my body, you know, it doesn't mean I'm a failure. Mm. My body just could not do it. So why would you look at somebody else and call the person a failure just because the person, mm. you know, yeah. had... So I feel like there's... We need to have these conversations a lot. We, we actually need to... Because like I shared at the beginning, I cried first time I shared my story. And I know it's the same thing for a lot of other people. We bottle up so much. Mm. And then at the point where we have the opportunity to tell the story, that's when we realize that, oh, okay. this is actually, you know, something worth sharing. Mm -hmm. As much as possible, and I know it's not easy for fear of judgment for somebody who has a life outside, mm. people will come for you and be like, shut up. Oh, you know, don't say that. You know, sometimes it's even from family. Mm. Mm. But as God is helping us, each person should take that responsibility of, if you, even if it's this bit of my story I want to share, there is somebody out there who is going to benefit from yeah. it. And let's break this ushush culture that's been passed to us from our ancestors. We have to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.
Thank you so much for sharing. I learned a lot. I'm looking mm. forward to my journey. Why <laughs> <laughs> right here? Hey, what's up? <laughs> yes, now I have all three of you. I said, please, uh, please, what's going on? What's going yeah. on? We all mm. learned a lot. I'm sure you learned more <laughs> yes. from your fellow moms. Yeah. 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 And thank you so much for watching. Join the conversation in the comment section below. I'll see you in the next episode.